everyone, Five Minute with Eric. So we just talked about on my one minute, what happens when you've got a dispute with a contractor? So the fact pattern here is a lady hires a, a construction company to do impact windows on her house. And the story is actually worth telling. So they do the windows. She ends up having a very negative experience with the group of people sent over to her house. She ends up getting into a fight with one of the project managers that was in her house. She left the room and came back and found the guy going through her desk and going through her papers. And she's like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm trying to find your signed agreement. And she's like, you get out of my house right now and never set foot in here again. She was obviously violating her privacy going through her stuff. So later on, the home inspector, because this is the type of thing where there's a permit and so in order to close the permit, you're gonna have somebody from the city come and make sure that the impact windows are installed correctly. Now, mind you, if you're watching this video from some part of the United States that doesn't have really high standards for building, or maybe you don't have hurricanes, then it's a little different. But here in Florida, if you're gonna be installing impact windows, they have to meet certain thresholds of worksmanship and construction. And quite frankly, you need them to be safe in case something goes wrong, in case there's a hurricane. So the, the, the city sends their official and they fail all of the permits. Basically, the, the construction was not up to the necessary standard. So the lady calls the company back and she says, hey company, I need you to uh, send somebody out and fix this. Obviously, I'm not paying you until the deal is done and, um, and do not send that same crew. I want you to send a different crew out. So she comes to me and my first question is, are they licensed? And she says, yeah, it's actually a pretty reputable firm. They're pretty big. They've been around for a long time and sure enough, I can confirm all of this. First of all, corporate records are all public in the state of Florida, so I pulled up the company name. Second of all, uh, licenses are public. So I was able to pull the licenses, and so I could see that these people are an, an actual real licensed business. Now that is very important. So basically, taking a step back in time, I was not there to help this lady when she was negotiating. I was not there when she was initially deciding who to hire. So if you're hiring a contractor, Think long and hard on if you're gonna use your cousin's handyman friend or if you're gonna use a licensed contractor. Now you might pay more and you probably should pay more for the licensed contractor, but when the cousin's handyman friend disappears or finishes the job halfway through or maybe just takes your money and never shows up, you will have a lot less options than if you use a proper licensed company. So if you use a proper licensed company, then we can not only go after the company, we can go after their licenses. There are even some construction related funds put aside by the state to help homeowners who get stuck in these situations. So that was question number one. Question number two is always, did you have a signed agreement? And sure enough, she did. And it wasn't a Mickey Mouse one page agreement, which by the way, everyone always comes to me and they say that they want a one page agreement. And I wanna say why? Why would you want something so flimsy that you can poke a hundred holes in it and it's not gonna be enforceable? Because what's the point of an agreement? Well, first point of an agreement is to have something in writing that's clear. This is your obligation, this is my obligation, this is the timeline, very clear. Number two, if things go wrong, and that's the only time we're gonna be reading that agreement ever again, is if things go wrong. If everything goes beautiful and everything goes swimmingly, you'll never look at that agreement again, just like any other time. If there's ever an agreement that's never been looked at again, it's because all the people are happy. But when they're not happy, they pull out the agreement and they come and talk to me. So make sure that when you're entering into these things, you're taking time to think, not if everything goes right, how about what if everything goes wrong? That's the, the thought process you need to have. So the lady says, yes, I've got this agreement. And it was like eight pages long. I was like, ooh, this window contractor had a real agreement. So I start reading from the bottom up. It's an old trick I learned because at the, from the top down, that's what we're supposed to do. From the bottom up, it's what, what do we do when things go wrong? So sure enough, I found a very detailed, I was pretty impressed, a very detailed dispute resolution clause. Now this is really important. It had the steps that she would have to take in order with timeline if she wants to fight them. So first it had the jurisdiction, the place, it had the law, it had an attorney's fee clause, which is always very important. It had mandatory mediation, which mediation, guys, is where you hire a neutral party to sit you guys down to try to help you make a deal. Now, they charge by the hour, the mediator, and usually that, that cost is gonna be split between the parties. So it is not a, a step that has no cost. So then, after 60 days of trying to mediate, or if after a written demand for mediation, see, that was an important step, 
written demand for mediation, 60 days, we couldn't get it done. Then you could start an arbitration, which is a private court system where you are literally hiring the arbitrator by the hour to try to resolve the dispute. So guys, please remember if you're entering into any agreement and if everything goes wrong, you would be upset, make sure you get it in writing and make sure you talk to a lawyer. Give me a call guys, thanks.